Hi guys, so in this video, I'll be discussing with you the solutions of questions number eight, nine, and 10 on paper B for WMI final round of 2022. Okay, so let's take a look at the first question, question number eight. The figure shows the famous hexagon magic square fill one until 19 into its cell so that the sum of all the numbers along each straight line is the same. Find the sum of the numbers in the six shaded cells. So now the key, the keys here are the digits that we're going to use are one to 19 and then the sum of each straight line should be the same. Now, what does it mean by each straight line? So we can take it as this, 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 this. So there are five straight lines there, as well as the straight lines here. One, two, three, four, five, another five. And if you take this one, that's also gonna be another five. All right, so those are the straight lines that should have the same sum. Now, because we have found out that um, if you, we take the horizontal straight lines, there are five of them. If we take these diagonal straight lines, there are five of them as well. So what we can do is to first find the sum, the total or the sum of one, two, three, until 19. So if we want to find the sum of consecutive numbers, remember there is an easy method we can use. We add the first number to the last number divided by two, multiply by the number of numbers. So one plus 19 is 20, 20 divided by two is 10. That is 10 times 19. That means the sum of the numbers from one to 19 is 190. And because there are five lines of five rows, then we can divide that by five. So we know that each line should have a total of 38. Knowing that the sum of each line should be 38, we can easily find the numbers who fill in the middle cell here. So 15 plus 10 is 25, 25 plus 13 is 38. The same goes here, 15 plus nine is 24, 24 plus 14 is 38. And then now we have to start filling in the cells that have at least one clue. Three plus 35 is um, 38. So that means to get 35, we can have a combination of 19, 16 or 18 and 17. Then we can use 18, 17 here and then 19, 16 here. Now we have 10 plus 16 is 26. 26 plus 12 is 38. 9 plus 18 is 27, 27 plus 11 is um, 38. And then we have now 14 plus 12 is 26, then 26 plus 12 is equal to um, 38. To make 12, we have um, 75 or um, 75 and 8, 4, um, 6, 6, 9, 3. So now uh, 93 is not possible because nine has been used. So let's take eight, four, and then 11 plus 19 is 30. 30 plus eight is 38. So get eight, we have two, six or one, seven, uh, or we can put two, six if you want. And then to get uh, nine plus 16 is 25. 25 plus 13 is, um, 25 plus 13 is 38. Then we get to get 13. The other two, three, three digits that we haven't used are 652. Okay, so now to get the sum of the um, numbers in the six shaded cells, we have 8 plus 4 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1 plus 7 is equal to this is 12. 12 plus 6 is 18 plus this is 20, 21, 28. So the sum is 28. Right now, let's go to number nine. The solid in the figure is made up of blocks in white, gray, and black. How many white blocks are used at most? So, now be careful with this. We want to know how many white blocks are used at most. 
So that also means the least number of gray and black blocks. And the other important clues that you all have to pay attention at is here. The size of a white block is one by one by one, while the size of a gray block is one by one by two. And the size of a black block is always one by one by three, as shown here. Okay, so the easiest method to answer this question is to first know the volume of the solid that is given here. Now we can count. Uh, this is a basic um, grade five lesson. So one, two, three, the innermost, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there are 15, um, the volume is 15 units, okay? But the number of blocks is not 15 because remember the sizes of the blocks are um, different. And then it says here from the mirror here, these are all black block. So this one, the, the three units on the back most are all black. All right, remember that? Uh, I'll put the sign there black. So these are black. Okay. And looking at this solid from the left, it also shows that these are black. So it's, it's already obvious, it's already clear and certain that the last three units on the back most are black, okay? And then now what about the gray? It says that the last two blocks on the bottom part here are, um, not the last two blocks, sorry, the last two units, it's just one block because the size is one by one by two. Um, let me list on the number two here to make it clearer. So black so far, we found three units that are black. And then we know that the last two units here, which is a block, a block of gray block, that is gray. And then these, the last, the two bottom most here are also gray. So that means for gray so far, we found four, right? Two plus two. I'm talking about the units, the volume. And then there is, a block that looks like one unit there, which is this one, because it's reflected directly through the mirror, right? However, you have to remember that the size of this gray block is always two. So that means if this one is gray, these ones are gray. So that is another two. So in total, there are six gray units because we want to get the most possible white blocks. So we do not consider any other blocks as gray or black. We consider them all as white. Now, there are 15 um, units in total, minus three, which are black, and six, which are gray. That means there are six white blocks at most. Okay. Now, last one, number 10. Below is a Sudoku game with numbers one to six. The numbers in each row, column, or a three by two frame cannot be repeated. Suppose three arrows are drawn and the numbers from tail to head of the arrow must be in ascending order, where the number in each square is larger than the previous one by one. Find the six digit number A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, for those who have played Sudoku before, you must be um, familiar with the rule and Actually, this one makes it even easier for us because it tells us that the arrow means the numbers must be consecutive. Okay, so the uh, first clue we can use is here. This means there are five consecutive numbers and consecutive, five consecutive numbers can be one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five means it only leaves us with the last number here, which must be a six, and it's not possible because if you see on its right, it's got a six, and you cannot have double sixes in one row. So that leaves us with only one option, which is two, three, four, five, six. And that means this must be a one there. 
And there's another clue here, three consecutive numbers and three consecutive numbers can be one, two, three, but the second number cannot be a two. So that option is left out. And then we can have two, three, four, three, four, five, or four, five, six, but you cannot have a six as the last number because it's got another six on its right. So we have the option two, three, four, or four, five, six. And if you look at this cell here or this square, below it has got one and five on its right, it's got two on its left, it's got six. It gives us an option of three and four. Now, if we take the option four, uh, sorry, it's not four, five, six, I meant to write three, four, five. Okay, if we take the option three, four, five, that means this must be a three, right? And we need a five in either one of these two squares, which is not possible because there is a five on that row. So that means this option must be eliminated as well. So we are left with the option two, three, four. And that means this square cannot be filled with a three. It must be filled with a four. So those are the first few um, very obvious clues that we can use. And then next, we try to find the square with the most clues here. So now let's take a look at this. On its um, top, it's got one and four. And then in the cells of six, it's got a five. And then below it, it's got a five. So it gives us an option of two, three, or six. Okay, these are the options that we can use. So it's still got um, quite a lot of numbers that can be placed there. So that is not really helpful. Mm, so the next one we can try to fill in might be over here. On its top, it's got one, two, uh, sorry, one and four, I mean. On its left, it's got two. In the cell of six, it's got three. On the top of it, it's got four and five. So that means this cell must be six. So now, this has eliminated the six from it, right? And then uh, now we have the options of two and three. It, we cannot put a three here because if we put a three here, it must be a two here. Well, it's got a two in the cells of six. So that means this cell must be filled with two and this must be filled with three and this must be filled with five. And that also means this must be filled with a two. Now, when when I do Sudoku and I found um, quite a lot of clues or numbers. What I normally try to, the trick that I utilize to find the next number I can certainly fill in is by drawing lines. So what do I mean by drawing lines? So for example, I'm trying to draw lines for number two. This is what I'm going to do. Now on this, on this row, I've got a two. On this row, I've got a two. On this row, I've got a two. This, I've got a two. I've got a two here. 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 So you see, after crossing all that, I know that, oh, this is the, the only square that hasn't got a two. So I must use a two over there. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it gives you like two or three options, but at least it helps. Okay, now let's try the same trick with three. This has got a 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 three. Okay, so now you see there are still a lot of squares that um, cannot be filled in. It's okay. So there's also another trick, which is by uh, finding the square with the most clues like this one. So maybe we can start with here. Oh, I think I can fill this one with, oh, uh, since this is a two and this must be three, four, and this must be a one, right? Because they must be consecutive numbers. So that means I'm missing five and six because this row has got five, the five must be here, and the top here must be a six of found the value of E, and this must be a one, uh, one, two, three, this must be a four. So, hmm, that helps a lot. This one must be a one. So on this row, we've got one, two, four, five, 
So what's missing is three and six. This also misses three and six, right? Okay, that's interesting. So now we found this much. Um, oh, you see this? This row has got a one, this row has got a one. So this row needs a one. This has got a one. So in this cells of six, the one must be over there. So that means this is a five. We are getting closer to the value of C. We found all the values of the other letters. And then um, these two cells can be filled with either a four or a five. Certainly the four must be here. Why? Because you cannot use four here. So we found the value of C and this must be a five. Actually, if you want to continue, you can, but the other squares, the values of the other squares are irrelevant now because we found the value of A, B, C, D, E, F. And then the question says, find the six digit number A, B, C, D, E, F. So A is one, B is two, C is four, D is two, E is six, and F is one. So the six digit number is 124,260. One. There you go. I hope this video helps and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.